Welcome to the Run Radio Podcast. My name's Trina, and my guest today is Ginger King, CEO and President of Grace Kingdom Beauty. Welcome. Thank you. You've been in the industry for a long time, and you help people create cosmetic lines? Yes, I do. I help them with from concept to launch, including formulation. That's very exciting. So what made you want to do this? Did you just start off in the world with a passion for that industry? Or did you start maybe in chemistry or stuff like in the labs first? I started in the lab first. Actually, originally, I wanted to become a makeup artist. But because being Asian, I was expected to, you know, if I don't get a PhD, at least get a master's degree. So I majored in chemistry and become a chemist. Then I still make my way into cosmetics, become a cosmetic chemist. And being a chemist is great, but being a marketer is even better because being a marketer, you actually direct what the chemist will be making. And because I have both of the marketing background and as well as the chemistry background, it makes me a perfect candidate for helping other people to start their own beauty line. And just for full transparency, I also have my own brand. So I can also help people after I uh, develop the brand for them. So what was it about creating your own line that you wanted to make sure that you implemented? For me, I was drawn to seeing that you have vegan cosmetics. That is always important to me. What was important when you were creating your line for you? Uh, for anyone, actually, when you want to create your own line, you must have a why, your mm -hmm. emotional why. And this is exactly why you are asking. The reason is, you know, actually creating a brand is easy. However, it's how are you going to nurture the brand is more important because it's determining your future success. So knowing your why is important. And the reason why I started my own brand for two reasons. First of all, because I've been helping other people to develop their brand, they always ask me, can I also help them after they launch their brand with me? Because having a baby is easy, but, you know, to help, help growing up the baby, you know, so they can take on the world is harder. So I need to walk my talk. Secondly, my own brand is very special because it's inspired by my own mentor, Damon Zhang of Shark Tank. Uh, there was one time I was with him at the meeting and he took out a lip balm and used it in front of me. I was like, uh, if there's something so close to him that's in his pocket on his lips, it has to be mine. And because Damon actually had a cancer scare before and lip balm is so intimate, it's like it can be used for men or women or even kids. And that's the only beauty product that could be ingested. I mean, we're not talking about lipstick because usually kids and men, they don't use lipstick. So I wanted to create something that's uh, 100, it's uh, supernatural and 100% vegan. And that's good for him. And because he's a speaker, so I kind of extend it to the speaker's community. And it's vegan. That's very exciting. What is some of the advice that you give people straight up when they come to you with a concept? Usually when people come to me, they a lot of times they don't really have a concept per se. They usually say, oh, I want to make such and such product because I'm, I'm looking for a cosmetic chemist. However, I always like to start them off with the concept just because without a concept, you cannot really build a brand. You're really only building a product. So during the concept development, what I would do with them is I will find out their emotional why and I will find out their uh, unique difference to help them with their brand DNA. This world actually has more beauty brands than we, we should have. So if you're going to be building another beauty brand, you better make sure it's meaningful. It's uh, You have purpose for that. So I'll help you to refine your mission statement, your vision statement, what kind of products you should be making, what kind of price point, packaging, distribution outlet, PR outlets, and philanthropy. Philanthropy has become very important in any brands just because we all live on the same earth. So when you purchase a product from brand A, 
which is solely just to fulfill your needs, versus you buy from brand B, not only solve your issues, but you know you're also contributing to some sort of social impact. It will make it more meaningful. What's one of your favorite cosmetic products to make? A skincare. Okay. Skincare, because skincare, you can really see the differences kind of within one to two weeks. And it's very fulfilling. Well, you can argue like color cosmetics can be even faster, right? Because that's uh that's why people wear makeup. Yes, for consumers, color cosmetics is like the magic wand can turn an ugly duckling into a swan immediately. However, being a cosmetic chemist, I hate making color cosmetics just because it takes me an hour to make it. It can take me three hours to clean it, especially with all the long wearing makeup. It takes a long time to clean up. You know, it's the aftermath. It's kind of like headache. Really interesting. Yes. I recently watched a, a documentary about how there were so many fake makeups out there. So many uh, people buying cosmetics and not knowing what were the ins in them. And it shocked me, actually. I was very surprised to realize that there were that many counterfeits out there. What have you noticed as we've moved forward, you know, in the past years with people becoming even more obsessed with looking good on videos and social media with cosmetics and watching out for those dangerous things in our skincare and makeup? I mean, the reason why you see a lot of counterfeit is because cosmetic products can be very profitable. A higher price tag does not really guarantee you they are using the best quality product. A lot of time you're paying for the advertisement and that give an opportunity for somebody coming in to kind of hijack the advertising dollar people have already been spending. And so they can just make fake products, which is really a very bad practice. Whether you're paying for the top dollar or for a, a a low amount of money. Uh, it's a good practice for consumers to really just buy products that you have, um, like they are quality out there. You know, don't jip yourself for buying a lower pricing product because they could be fake and they could be expired products as well. Neither are good for your skin health or hair health. Why do people get so wrapped up in a higher price tag? Because it seems like from what we've kind of been taught is you're really not always getting a better product. You're mostly paying for expensive, fancy packaging and, you know, perfumed products. Is that true? Also really depending on the brand. They are brand. They are really just focusing on packaging and you really paying for the packaging. But they are also brand with conscious and you will be paying for more of the top dollars because of the active ingredients that they use in their products. So sometimes it's very hard to say, you know, it's kind of buyer beware type of situation. What should we be looking for in our cosmetics or in our skincare that's going to be the most multitasking and good for our skin. I know it can vary person to person, but generally. Generally, I will look for, if it's skincare or hair care products, I will look for products that have active ingredients in there. It's not just feel good. You also want to see what kind of claims they are making. Okay. And if you're going to be paying for top dollars, I make sure they have clinical data. You know, like uh, whatever percentage uh, of minimizing the appearance of lines and wrinkles, minimizing the appearance of pores, stuff like that. And the, they cannot just say that. They have to have claims to back up. They have to, you know, say how many people are they testing on it. Usually you need a minimum, minimum of 30 or prefer 50 people testing on it. It's not just testing on friends and families. Why are people, cause some cosmetic companies still testing on animals? 
Yeah, it's less and less in uh in the past because the technology isn't so advanced. So people, I mean, cosmetic companies did uh test on animals, but right now there are a lot of in vitro method. They don't test as much, with the exception of well, actually in China they kind of stop doing that too. Or uh, in Japan, in the past, in order to qualify as a quasi drug, which is the equivalent of our like over the counter OTC here, they require animal testing because it's actually not ethical to test on human, you know, for anything. That's what and animals, what they're really testing is um white mouse or the the back of the rabbit ear to, to test on acne. And Need they can everybody is shy away from testing from animals now for the recent few years. What about using animal byproducts in cosmetics? Are people finally pulling away from that too? Unfortunately, I still see a lot of animal byproducts, and um, which I personally don't use any of them. And the reason why people still use animal byproduct because they think it's byproduct. They think, you know, they are turning a waste into something useful. So mm. it all depending on your mentality because, you know, it's like somebody's waste can be somebody else's treasure. And there are different clientele. I mean, for example, you can still see a lot of ingredients from sheep, like lanolin. Personally, I don't use lanolin just because... um. Like on the long term use, you can get contact dermatitis. But there are people who just like the feel of the lanolin because lanolin give a very like uh, anxious feel. Like it's sticky, but it's not sticky and it's a good moisturizer. So it really depending on who are you targeting and do they mind using animal byproducts because animal byproduct isn't really hurting animals. So if someone has the this idea and they've got their why and they reach out to you, what's the process like from there? Okay, they know their why. Actually, sometimes people may know their why. I kind of go a deep dive with them. I ask okay. them their why seven times because a lot of times people are going to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to, the reason why I want to have my own brand is because I want to leave a legacy. Now, leaving a legacy, depending on whether your family wants to inherit your legacy or not, right? <laughs> they don't want. And also, I have people say, well, I want because cosmetic is profitable. I want to make money. Now, if you win a lot, are you still going to continue having your own beauty brand? So there are a lot of the why. If something else can replace what you're going to do, are you still continue to do it? The reason why you really need to go get down to this emotional why to the core is because having a beauty brand can look very glamorous on the surface, but there is really no overnight success. A lot of brands, you know, even though they can be famous today, they can take them anywhere from 10 to 15 years before you see them. And this is the reason why you better have a very strong emotional why. So when you hit obstacles, you can still continue on going. So after your why, then I can help you to draft your mission statement because you really need to have a mission. Why are you different? You need to have the mission and vision. Then we can talk about the products that you can make. And what differentiate my service from other so-called marketing agencies? Because marketing agencies can do brand development for you. But marketing agencies, they are not cosmetic chemists. They do not have the access to all the technologies available. That's only privy to cosmetic chemists due to liability reasons. Because we never want to encourage people to do DIY. And you shouldn't if you do. You are not a cosmetic chemist. Even if you are a scientist, you have a scientist background, you may not understand the, regul the regulatory landscape. You may not understand the percentage limitation of what can be used. You may not understand the stability requirement, the micro challenge requirement. Cosmetic science is not kitchen science, which a lot of people thought, you know, you can do DIY. No, you cannot. It's just also just not safe and smart to do. 
on so yeah, many Yeah, I don't levels. know if you do it for yourself, you know, but not yeah. for sale. Not for distribution. What's something that, what's one of the main things that we should be watching out for or looking for when we are buying our shampoo, conditioner, and skincare and makeup? Well, you always buy from the stores that you know, because, you know, all those buyers have already vetted out whether the brand is good or not. You know, buy from your national retailers, your targets, the work, work with Sephora, Otas, Credo, because going into a retailer store is actually hard. So they already did all the footwork for you. Now, if you're going to be buying from the indie brand who you don't know, you kind of need to check out the whole website and kind of Google to have some sort of gut feel to see. Okay. And if the pricing is not ridiculous, there's nothing better than just buy it and try, try it. Now you're going to be asking, how about sampling? Most of the indie brands, they don't have samples just because it's an extra expense. Yeah. You can get samples from the big retail stores. You know, it's like when you go to Sephora, you can ask for small samples if you are not sure. And they also have return policies. So it depending on your budget, if you can just go ahead and buy it, why not? And, and also you can support indie brands, you know, just to show a little bit support if, you know, it's not outrageous pricing that you may not trust. And let me put it this way. If, if um, the products have outrageous pricing, they will have, they, they would have the budget to support to give you a sample anyways. Yeah. Excellent point. <laughs> your skin looks gorgeous. What is one of your favorite products to use? Actually, don't have a favorite product because I'm in this beauty business. So I'm constantly testing products and like um an award judge for many different magazines and you know many different beauty events. Like I just received like 75 pounds worth of products. Oh my goodness. Over- 124 products for me to evaluate so I've been doing like a two to three products you know every day and because I only have one face one you know one head of hair so what I would do is I actually do a half face half hair so I can test multiple products at the same time oh my goodness does that ever get overwhelming or do you enjoy it I enjoy it because I can get to see, you know, what's trending, what's out there, what is everybody's doing. And I can actually draw inspiration um, in how to deliver an even better product. So I, I love what I do. Do do you sometimes need more than one try to decide if you like it or not? Okay, so you this is how I usually do it. Okay. I would try the product at least once, you know, yes. you know, because it's part of my judging criteria. But I will put aside a stash that I will go back to it to try more. Because honestly, for hair care, it's not so different because hair is dead. There is a really, you know, if you like the product, it's great. Continue using it. But you probably won't see a, a continuous improvement over time because it's dead. Skin is different. Skin, you seriously, you need to try to be fair. You need to try at least two to four weeks oh. to get the full improvement. And this is what the most of the clinical studies are also done. You know, you see the brand who have clinical studies is usually done on a 28 days period of time. So in terms of the judging process, I don't have the 20, I don't have the 28 days to judge it. But the brand will supply me clinical data. And the clinical okay. data has to be done on a third-party lab. So this is not the data from the brand. Actually, it's a data from a third-party independent lab. So I will be judging on my user experience and also to see if my user experience can kind of match into what they are claiming. And if it is the truth, then I know it's a good product. So yes, it's very like a first time experience but also think about this if you do not like how the product feel on you you will not go back to it the second time yeah (laughs) for sure oh 
congratulations on all your accolades and uh, what keeps you, what's, what's a typical day like for you? A uh, typical day like for me is I do a lot of podcasting. <laughs> Cool. Yep. I also do TV interviews and also um I do brand development for clients. I actually enjoy doing brand development because brand development is the foundation of the brand. When you want a, a product, honestly, any customer they come is to make a product because that's what they do. Mm-hmm. But how are you gonna differentiate you? It's really comes down back to your brand development. You know, I give you that secret sauce, I give you the secret technology complex that fits your brand DNA. So I do a lot of brand development work. And I usually do my lab work on the weekends just oh because, um, yeah, I, I work 24 seven. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I do it on weekends just because during weekends I have less distraction. It, it's So I can focus on lab work. So I usually do my uh, lab work on weekends. But during the day, I do a lot of create creativity work. How many clients do you take on at one time? I can only take up to five every quarter just okay. because it's uh, very time consuming. And do you ever feel like torn with ideas between different clients or are they also individual that that's not an issue? Oh, that it's not, it's not an issue. They are, however, it's like not everybody wants to do serum. <laughs> Okay. everybody wants to do skin brightening but I don't give everybody the same thing just because mm-hmm. it's first of all it's not ethical second remember I talk about the brand development the reason yes. why you want to have a brand is because you want to have a point of differentiation how you want to do skin brightening from brand A will be very different from brand B that give you a dermatologist you have a different focus if you are just a regular consumer that would be troubled by uh, like hyperpigmentation, you know, or you have like a scar tissue uh, issues, it, all the approaches are very, very different. So for each brand, each founder, I give them a very customized approach to target what they want to achieve. Did you ever get a chance to do makeup? artistry on other people or did you completely stick with I I did I did well uh when I when I was in uh, my college I I actually moonlighted uh evenings and weekends at cosmetic counters doing makeup for people to fulfill my dream and um I actually haven't been doing that and and once in a while, I freelance, you know, for doing makeup events, you know, even though I don't really need the money, but I'm doing this for fun. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you know, it's like a touching customers and making them beautiful. It's a joy for me. I haven't been doing that after pandemic starts just because nobody <laughs> wants to touch anyone. <laughs> No kidding. <laughs> has it been nice for you to see that skincare has gotten more personalized and there's been a wider range available for all the different skin tones and skin colors out there? Yes, I do like that customization because um, people are different. People have different needs. And even let's say people have like a blemished skin, but people can have very, very oily skin or people can have over dry skin on the top, still oily underneath. So it's not really a one solution fits all type of situation. And this is also why I don't really care for using beauty influencers because whatever they use may not be suitable for your skin type. Yeah. Yeah. It, they they are fun to watch, but I often think, wow. I mean, and I think of ages too. I'm watching someone with 20 year old skin and I'm not 20 year old skin. So it's not always going to apply the same at all. Yeah. <laughs> what What is on the horizon for you? It seems like you've accomplished so much. Are you just going to keep moving forward with what you've been doing or do you have other ideas in mind? Well, I do have my own brand and it's actually currently under rebranding right now because mm-hmm. this is what you usually do it as an entrepreneur. You don't never hold on to your idea for too long. 
you know, you should really, you have something, you should just go with it and to kind of get the market feedback and then you improve that way. First to market is actually better than you wait for everybody else is done, then you, you launch it because then you'll be too late. So you will actually launch your product first and then to see if you need any refinement, then you keep continuing and pu pushing it out. So when I started my brand, um, actually personally, I thought my packaging is fine. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of beauty editors don't like my packaging. And without the beauty editors to help you to push out, it's harder. So okay. I'm changing my packaging to the way that beauty editors will be loving it <laughs> to, you know, to showcase, to talk about it. And, and I will probably stop doing consulting for another five to eight years yeah. and I'll be focusing on doing my brand because when you are a service provider, it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's yeah. very hard to scale. But when you have a brand, you have a product line, you can make money when you sleep once you're established. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I would say focusing on my brand will be something that I'll be more paying attention once my rebranding is done. <laughs> All right. That sounds exciting. I hope that you will come back when you've rebranded and talk about the launch of the new product. I'm very excited about it. Thank you for spending some time sharing about what you do. I think this is extremely exciting and interesting. And uh, I, I do hope you come back. Thank you, Gina. Tell people where they can go to keep up with you. They can follow me on my Instagram, the beauty shark ginger. And if they DM me, like saying podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, I'll give them a little gift. I'll give them the, my top 10 tips on how to start your own beauty brand. So yeah, the Beauty Shark Ginger on Instagram and wow. just DM me, say podcast and, you know, podcast. from Gina. Yeah. All right. You guys got that. Follow Ginger King and keyword to DM her. It's podcast. Thank you so much. Be sure you're keeping along at runradio.net.